You know, the, the thing that impressed me about working with David Lynch was that he's very, very into the mood of a scene, you know, the, the feeling of a scene, the atmosphere that you build to make a scene. Um, those, are, those are really key for him, and, and he, loves, he loves to, you know, he's very descriptive about the, the, the mood and, and the feeling of a scene and, and, and how, how it has to be. Um, and, and for me, that's great because he gives me a lot of information to work with. So we had already designed, uh, you know, the colors and the, and the palette of the film. Um, but when it came to the lighting, uh, you know, he has very, very distinct ideas. Becomes, he comes from a painting background uh, and he brings all that to the filmmaking process too. All, all those elements, all those things um, that you do, uh, or that I do when I take a still photograph, for instance, um, um, are a concern in making a movie, but to a bigger extent. So, so I take a still photograph and I, I look at the relationship between the two colors in the frame, uh, and, and I, I, I do my best to place them in a way that compositionally is strong, you know, that makes a difference, that, that makes a statement about something. And certainly we do that when we compose a movie frame as well, but the advantage of movies is that you can move the camera, you can move the people. It's a constantly changing relationship, and how you choose to do that is, is, is very particular. So where one director might stand back and look at the whole scene in this powerful composition, another director might say, that's fine for now, and then I want to make the move in and, and show me just the face. Uh, and instead of editing, cutting into there, we're going to make a move. And, and that sense of moving the camera gives the whole, the whole, uh, a whole different power to the scene. Right. Time passes by, and like, on like a, on like a still image. Right, right. So, so for instance, on, um, on Blue Velvet, I realized the other night as I watched it that that really the camera is is often very static until something happens that David wants to make a point of that we decide is important and then very slowly the camera makes this laborious move in to the face and it gives it such a strange emphasis it's it's almost unnatural uh, uh, but it's much better than cutting to someone's close-up. It's a, it's a very conscious director's move to point something up, and I and I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's, it's, uh, uh, the camera is um, uh, camera. It's uh, the, the, the the tool of expression in film. Right? Yeah, the yeah, of yeah. The how we, how no, but you realize works. after after working with different directors, you realize how. Uh, how each has a different bias. Each one likes something, and some some would say, "I don't, you know, we don't really need to see his face during this scene. Right. We could actually shoot this kind of over his shoulder and see the other person. So maybe the other person, the person reacting to what I'm saying, is more important. And and you so you see a little bit of my face, and even though I'm talking, it's the reaction of this person and we're going to film this whole scene just on the reaction of the other person because that's what the drama is about. So those are decisions that we make you know, when we decide to, 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 to design the photography for a given scene. It's interesting because uh, every director treats it, treats it a little bit differently. So David Lynch treats the detail and the need for the mood and the feeling one way. Jim Jarmusch does it a little different way. Um, both very driven to do it their way, both interested in having what they need from a cinematographer and from the photography, uh, but but different, you know, di divergent. You know, when we look at at, at uh, Blue Velvet, it's uh, it's a film of very rich and saturated color. You know, that is the world we created. That the color blue and and the richness of people's faces and and the design of of the rooms that we photograph has a particular look to it. Uh, on Jim Jarmusch's film, Patterson, we pulled back the color. It's much more naturalistic. It's a very, very different feeling. It's yeah. still it's still soft. It's very under control. Uh, yet the color is has taken a different place 
yeah. in the movie. Sure, sure. Um, I mean, likewise, uh, both David and, and Jim were very concerned with, with the framing of the shot, with the, the composition was very, very key for them. Uh, it had a feeling it, c it carried some information about storytelling. Um, but not everyone's like that. Uh, I worked um, earlier in my career with John Cassavetes, and, okay. and, and John Cassavetes was much more focused on, on the actors and the performance and, and creating an atmosphere for the performance to happen. And although it seems often improvised in his films, it really was controlled. I mean, it may have it, there may have been an, uh, an element of, of improvisation, but, but there's a script. I mean, there's really a script, and, and even if he had to change the script, they improvised, they found a new way to do it, and they wrote it down and learned it, and then we filmed that. So each, each director has, has a path and a, and a clear focus, and they're all different, and that's the wonderful thing about my job, is I, I get to, to, to be like a chameleon and adapt mm -hmm. to uh, what their needs are. I think the the accessibility of, of equipment, uh, both camera equipment and, for instance, editing equipment, yeah. is is so much greater today that it has opened this door for for many people to go out and you know make their first film. It's it's as though uh, you know everybody can write a story, everybody can make a movie now. It's 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 much easier than it was. It's certainly less expensive than it was. Uh, they're they're not all good, but a lot of people are are trying. And and I don't know that a formal film education is as important as going out and actually trying it and, get, and digging in and taking a chance. Because even with a film education, you strike out and make a movie. You're you're kind of on your own. You you have some some background, but but it doesn't necessarily make the film any better. And and. Uh, and it really starts to rely on your talent, whether you can, right. you can pull this off or not. So uh, the, the, the most important thing is to go out there and just do it. I mean, I think that, you know, the, the, the best advice really is to, is to do something that you, that you feel passionate about, do something that you really care about. Um, it shows. It shows in the final piece if you care about your subject. Um, so if it's a documentary about someone who does something uh, and, and you, you love what they do and you love watching them, it will show in the piece. It will show in your movie. And that's what, that's what makes your movie special is your love, your drive you know, to get this right. That, that it, because once you're once you care that much about any project, you you, you go back to that attention to detail that you were. Yeah. About. Well, I think that 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 attention to the detail, you know, you know, will become the will be the, be the byproduct of this. Uh, but you have to be passionate about it. I mean, you know, I think that's that's why sometimes it's hard to decide which film to do next. I mm -hmm. look at this script and I look at that script. Uh, you know, this one uh, is about a subject that I like. This one is about something else that I'm not so concerned about. You know, I, I tend to choose the one that I'm I'm passionate about, that I'm concerned about, that I yeah. that I love the director, that I love the work of the director, um, and and that draws me in, that gets me involved, and it makes me more excited. You know, to to go to work every day. What I enjoy is. I, I enjoy looking at the, at the work of young people who are just starting out, who've only shot a feature or two, mm. for instance, and I see, I see things they do that I wouldn't have tried, that I would have been a little scared to try, mm. and that, that makes me feel great. You know, it makes yeah. me feel great because they've, they've pushed through a little barrier and done something that I'm sure scared them for a moment, but but they but they did it and they learned from it, uh, and and the movie, you know, shows that the movie the movie reflects that, and that's that's exciting to me. I mean, you know, I remember starting out and 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 being in a in a tough place because I you know the director asked for something I didn't know if I could do it, I didn't know how to solve the problem, 
and at some point you just jump in and take a risk mm -hmm. and say, well, I've actually never done that before, but I'm not going to admit that I've never done it before. I'm just going to forge ahead and give it a try and, and keep my fingers crossed. And when I see a young cinematographer do that, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I think it's possible. I think that, you know, there's, there's, always, there's always a certain crossover. Um, um, you know, I mean, I think that on a bigger film, things do get more compartmentalized, and sometimes that's bad, probably. But, but um, certainly when you make a smaller film or when you make a documentary film or a film that has, um, you know, uh, doesn't fit into a category, um, there's a lot more crossover, and I think that that's exciting because you know people try things, and 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 it, if if a director feels that he or she can shoot, then they should they should go at it. Uh, I mean, I think that one advantage of of compartmentalizing is that, f for instance, if you direct a scene, it maybe help you to have someone else edit it. For instance, just so you have another point of view, another set of eyes that you can compare. And likewise, with a cinematographer, if you have someone you can communicate with who visualizes it for you, you, you both are you know, making the same movie, but at least you have two sets of eyes working on the same thing. Sometimes that helps. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a fabulous idea to integrate different disciplines into the same festival. I mean, it is all about the arts. It's all about opening the audience's eyes to new things, and that's what's fun. So whether it's a dramatic movie or a documentary movie or a documentary movie that's about painting or uh, a, a virtual reality artist that uses animation with, you know, virtual photography, I mean, I think it's great. I, I just I just love it that that we can combine these things, and because the technology is advancing quickly, we can do it better. You know, we can make those things come together better. So, uh, the other thing I like about this festival a lot is that it really it integrates the community into it. It, it in, integrates Houston house. It integrates it integrates Houston into the art form into the movie making which is wonderful because it's 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 you know it's about the city it's about local people as well as outsiders who come in and do things and it's all all mashed up together i love seeing um arts festivals pop up in in cities other than new york and los right, angeles you know cities, right. um because you know everyone has something to throw in to add to right. You know, and, and certainly there's a wonderful, wonderful art scene. You know, you look at the the art and culture of, of Houston. It's it's a it's a beautiful thing to see. No, for sure, and it's a it's an interesting and eclectic combination of cultures, languages, uh, yeah. life experiences. Yeah, like other like other places where there's that diversity, but and here it just interacts in a, in its own unique way. Yeah. And I think it but I think you're you're in a position now, and and maybe it's. Maybe it's happening in a lot of places where it's being celebrated. That that diversity right. is actually being celebrated, and and it's done in the spirit of of being inclusive. Right. That I'm I really want to see what you are up to, what you are doing, sure. and how it's different than I would do it. Sure. It's it's a wonderful thing.